Welcome into another edition of Long Ball, Post Media's deep dive on the Blue Jays, your weekly stop for news and analysis. Rob Wong is always joined alongside by Rob Longley, Blue Jays beat writer and columnist for the Toronto Sun. And Rob, it feels like uh, every week we do these now, the Blue Jays are having a nice little run in a 5-3 and three home stand against a couple of teams chasing them right now for top spot in the wild card. Of course, the Rays and then a big series win over the Orioles this past weekend. Could have been a sweep if not for a Jordan Romano stumbling, but uh, hard to argue with what they did over the last seven days. Yeah, for sure, Rob. And I think I think uh, a couple of things come to mind. One is um, they're starting to show a little bit more consistency that they had uh, throughout most of the regular season. And the other thing is uh, they, they have a real clever mindset right now, and that is to approach it series by series. Because pretty soon, winning a series is going to mean a lot, right? So if you can if you can beat the Tampa Bay Rays in a series at home and you can beat the Baltimore Orioles in a series at home, go on the road and beat Tampa, maybe beat the Yankees here next week in a series, it gives you confidence that you can win two out of three or three out of four. And that's going to be the mindset that, that they're going to need to take into the postseason when that arrives. And by the way, that's going to be basically three weeks away, right? Or less than three weeks away. So um, yeah, I think they're, they're playing with a different type of confidence now. Like the, the offense isn't still, still isn't uh, as explosive as they'd probably like it to be, but they're finding ways to win series, but they're finding ways to grind out wins in games, whether that's uh, with strong defense, whether that's with the, with the, uh, a starter like Jose Barrios in his last start, just sort of, Maybe not having his best stuff, but finding a way to get through six innings and then handing it off to the bullpen, which continues to be very strong. So, yes, I think it was an encouraging homestand for them and, and certainly a very strong uh, start to the month of September. They've already won as many games in September as they won in all of August last year. And you're starting to feel the sense that there's some some momentum on their side. So as you mentioned, the offense not maybe clicking the way they ultimately want it to be. Teoscar Hernandez is in a pretty big funk right now. Bo Bichette was obviously carrying them for the first couple of weeks. But on this most recent homestand, you know, George Springer with a couple of big home runs, Matt Chapman as well, Vladdy Jr. getting into the act. Are you starting to see some signs here of some of these uh, big boppers coming out of it? Yeah, maybe some signs, Rob, but not what you're, not what you're going to need from this team. I mean, we, it seems like we talk about this every week, right? I mean... We see signs of this offense showing the flash that it showed for much of last season. Uh, But they've been waiting for it. They've been waiting for everybody to sort of click at the same time in in 2022. And, you know, we're starting to run out of time. And I think they're going to need – they're really going to need contributions from up and down the lineup. Um, Fortunately, as you mentioned, they've had a huge September from Bo Bichette. They've had some, some, some decent contributions from Matt Chapman. Uh, but Vlad Guerrero Jr., you know, he's not hitting the long hit one out here on the weekend in Toronto. But, uh, you know, he's certainly not the home run threat that he, the hit, that he has been in, through most of his career. And, yeah, Teoscar Hernandez is in, is in a terrible slump. He's hitting less than 200 over his last several games. And um, when it gets one-dimensional and, and you only really have to worry about Bo Bichette, it's going to be a lot easier for opposing pitching staffs to approach the, the, the Jays lineup uh, come October when the playoffs come around. But I mean, there's there's still some confidence in there that it's going to happen. That George George Springer, what a story he is! Just playing through the pain that he does and contributing in so many ways uh, on offense. He's a, he's and again, we've talked about this. He is the ultimate leadoff hitter in baseball. Whether it's doubles, singles, getting on base, and even the occasional home run, as he continues to contribute, despite playing with an elbow that I'm convinced is going to need surgery once the season's over. So. But they do need the big guys. They do need the big guys to to contribute and and, and give Bo Bichette some support. And I think if this team's going to go anywhere um, come October, you're going to have to have a a hot Vlad Guerrero Jr. complimenting a hot Bo Bichette and, and certainly a contributing Teoscar Hernandez. Now, of course, generally our focus is on the Blue Jays, but hard not to talk about what's going on right now, Rob, in the uh, AL MVP race. You and I had a nice little back and forth on uh, Twitter the other day. Now, I do want to clarify my statements that I do believe I am in the minority, that I do think Aaron Judge is going to win uh, the MVP. I think for me, it's just with Shohei Otani's season and the stuff that he is doing, we haven't seen it in, you know, a hundred years really since, you know, Babe Ruth was, you know, pitching and hitting at the same time. Uh, the numbers just absolutely jumping off the page for Otani uh, this season. If I had a pick, I would go to him, but I can understand why someone would want to select uh, Aaron Judge. And that seems to be the way uh, that you would lean as of right now anyways. Yeah. And I do have a vote in the MVP category this year, and I'm, I'm going to weigh all the options because I, 
I don't like some of the irrational uh, thoughts from both sides of it, that you automatically have to have to give it to Shohei Otani because he's a unicorn or that you automatically have to give it to Aaron Judge because he's going to hit 60 home runs. But look, I mean, there's, there's a couple of factors at play here. Sure, we haven't seen uh, we haven't seen what Shohei Otani is doing ever in the history of baseball or back since back to the Babe Ruth days. But we haven't really seen what Aaron Judge is doing either. I mean, he is now two home runs away as we speak here with 59 from hitting more home runs than anybody has ever done in the American League, which is which is a, which is a, a true accomplishment. Um, I'm not of the mind that I mean I know there's a debate about most outstanding player and most valuable player. So I don't completely say that your team has to be in the playoffs to uh, to win this award, but I do factor it in as part of it. And I think if you if you look at where the New York Yankees would be uh, without Aaron Judge, I mean they might not even be in a playoff position right now. So he offensively he is certainly he, he certainly carried that team, and he's he's validated his home run total um, by some of his other offensive statistics as well, his RBIs and his his. Um, his, his average, his batting average, he's having one of the com- most complete hitting seasons we've seen in the major leagues in a long, long time. And and there's no let up, right? I mean, he's been as, almost as strong as, as in September as he was in that sensational July that he had. And I think the watch is on right now. Like, what, where, where is it going to end for him? And as an aside to it, Rob, um, I think it's going to be a real exciting time in Toronto next week when the Yankees come to town because there's a very good chance that uh, – on, on one of those three nights that he could make some some American League history. He, he could hit his 60, well, first home, home run one of those nights or even his 62nd. And he likes hitting home runs at the Rogers Center. He's hit 11 in his career there. And uh, funny, I, 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 I was curious today. So I, I looked at the, uh, the, the uh, seat availability at the Rogers Center for those games. <laughs> and there's literally no seats available in all those lower 200, seconds, uh, 200 sections in left field, which is where he tends to hit hit his home run. So I think it's going to be a real spectacle when Aaron Judge comes to town uh, next week. And I think, uh, I think he's coming, becoming very close to, su- to cementing his, his MVP status. And, and that's not to diminish what Shohei Otani has done, because I don't think there's, a, there's I, I think that, uh, I don't think that, that there's any other player that could come close. And I, you know, Vlad Guerrero Jr. last year had a sensational year and the right guy won, Shohei Otani won. But I think the what, what Judge has done this year is such an outlier and, and such an historic season that uh, that he probably deserves the nod. Yeah, it's been unbelievable to watch both of these guys. Still a couple of weeks to decide the AL MVP. As always, you can find Rob's work at the Toronto Sun, and you can find him on Twitter at Longley Sun Sports.